Hi there, this is me your friend Deepak and I welcome you to yet another video of IT Job Matters. Guys, it was almost 2 years ever since I haven't uploaded any video on YouTube. Actually, I took some break from YouTube. Now I will be uploading videos on regular basis on YouTube. In these 3 or 4 years, I have learned a lot adding mainframe modernization. And currently, in fact, I am working on mainframe modernization project so i have a lot to share with you so i will keep on creating video and sharing with you so now just to start with i just thought i will answer all those questions which was asked by you so let's start with today video pardon me if i have not included your question in this video but i will make sure to include remaining questions in my next video Okay, so now let's start with the first question. It was asked by Chiranjeevi that can you explain how to resolve minus 818 event? So basically, uh, we get SQL error code minus 818 when the consistency token or timestamp of a Kobo load module doesn't match with the consistency token or timestamp with the plan or package. So if that consistency token doesn't match, uh, with the application program or a COBOL application program which you are trying to execute it will be not able to run the SQL query which you have written in the COBOL program so for that it becomes necessary to resolve this issue so basically a uh, reason for this could be like the application program might have been compiled pre-compiled compiled even linked edited as well but uh, developer might have forgot to bind it so in this case like the consistency token will be not matching so solution for this is like uh, you need to bind the application using the dbrm basically where you have the same consistency token what you have into the kobo load module or better just do the pre-compile again and then compile up the kobo modified source code again and then on the other hand bind the dbrm to a plan or package uh, I have also created a video on this topic like uh, COBOL DB2 program compilation and pre-compilation process. I have created in very detailed way. You can refer that as well. Give the link of that video in the video description as well. Now next question was asked by Sai K that uh, if your DB2 program is writing output file, how is the output file handled during restart? So I'm assuming that Sai is trying to say that if my COBOL DB2 program is uh, using a file as well where basically after processing each record the record is getting uh, written to the output file. So in most of the cases what I have seen if the disposition is new and job abends at that step the file will be not catalogued right. So every time you run that step a file will be created and if it is successful the file will be there on the dash d else it will not get cataloged let's say <coughs> in this case we are using a mod or old so in this case the file will be there with the record or as well so in this scenario what sai is saying like let's say there are like 10000 record and after uh, processing 120 1020 record job abandoned so assuming that you have used mod disposition of the data set so like like uh, uh let's say your commit frequency is 1000 record so 1000 record will be committed and then rest 20 when you will process again you will keep on writing into the file right and once 1000 is reached you will be committing it now the 20 record you have already written to the file and job is abandoning right so in this case basically uh, like db2 table thing you will be able to handle with the checkpoint uh, restart table which you will be creating but <coughs> this file thing you need to handle manually because in file uh, it is not good idea to hold the record like what we do in main uh, in case of db2 like we'll be holding the 1000 uh, record in the buffer pool and once the 1000 record is processed we'll be doing a commit 
we cannot have same thing here in uh, file handling case as well like we need to keep on writing into the file there are possibility as well like you can create a copy book where it will be uh, uh you can create like table structure of 1000 times but that will be unnecessary storage wastage but that option is also there like as you are done with the thousand record you will commit and at the same time you will write into the file if in between job is abandoning let's say 100 1020 the 20 record will be not there in file and not there in db2 table as well so this way it, it can be handled Next question was asked by Kunal Vastani that what about checkpoint can you please help me understand this point yeah so basically checkpoint is uh, the point when your job abandoned and when next time when you restart your job the same checkpoint will be referred to determine from which point the job needs to start its execution so in mostly in in most of the cases i've seen like uh, we use db2 table we create a table like restart table or checkpoint restart table the name can be of the as per the organization standard or your choice like three records are common three row uh, columns basically program name the execution date and the record key so basically program name like the which program is being used or the program which is being going to abend the date of execution then when the job was getting executed and the record key like the last record key when uh, till that point the uh, record is processed let's say there are 10,000 record needs to be processed and the commit frequency is 1000 so after every 1000 the record key can be updated <coughs> at the same time the commit can be done so let's say at 1002 the job abends so the record key will have 1000 so next time when we are going to start the two record which basically has been processed but it will be rolled back right because job abandoned so next time when we restart the checkpoint restart table will have record key as 1000 so next time the record uh, the job will start its execution from 1001 record question was asked by venkata sudhir that what is difference between full outer join and union so yeah so this query basically or question i have already covered in this video as well I will give the link of that video in description but I will quickly tell you the difference in union we have lot of restrictions and union basically <coughs> combines data into one row uh, like you can see here the example uh, and in as I said like in union in union all we have lot of restriction like number of column from A and B tables should be matching and uh, the data type also should be matching these are the restrictions now if you see here i have uh, did a union on the city name so if you see here the row number of row will be increasing right like say uh, this is union and this is union also in union like you will be getting all the city name from this table all the city name from this table and whichever is repeating uh, more than one two times for that the only one entry will come in case of union all all the entry be it get uh, be it like it is getting repeated two time three time or four time every entry will come here in case of full outer join or full join basically will also get the like full data but see here like i have <coughs> been trying to get the name and department name so the width of the table is increasing here height of the table is uh, height of the result set is increasing and here width of the result is increased right you will you will have the liberty to get some data from this table from this table like you will be able to get the department name from this table or maybe department id from this table so that option you have in join so join basically you can combine column from two or three different tables in case of join 
but in case of union you just get the data from both the table uh, of a column which you specify in your query next question was asked by survi sarma that uh, how to identify the bad record <coughs> in file with millions of record which caused the job abend so basically uh, see when job abends you will be able to see the log or uh, maybe in abended maybe in sdsf or in in any tool which you are using so there basically you can look for the offset number and that offset offset number you can go the the program which uh, the jcl might be using some cobol program where the job abandoned so that cobol program you can let's say you are using endeavor so you can generate the compile listing there itself or it is there basically that feature is already there in the endeavor that you can see the compile listing look for that offset number you will find that offset number in compile listing that's the exact location where job has abandoned where the bad record has occurred so guys the next question is asked by sanjeev kumar that if we are getting sql code minus 805 error how would to resolve that so we get sql code minus 805 uh, in case like cobol load module which we are trying to execute it's try to run or attempt to use a package or plan which is not found into the db2 directory or db2 catalog so when we get sql code 805 we get the reason code as well it's like reason code varies from 1 to 3 4 so there are four reason codes so we get reason code 1 if the package name is not found we could get reason code 2 like if the db dvrm doesn't have a matching dvrm which we are trying to use it is not it doesn't have a matching entry into the table we get reason code 3 if the dvrm name which we are uh, trying to use has more than one entry into the package list so in most of the cases like these three scenario which i said we will be rebinding the dvrm basically so that solves this sql code 805 issues next question was asked by anu ishwarya that kindly explain cobol compilation index subscript tables search operations file concept in cobol yeah so the cobol compilation video i have already created i will give the link here in comment or description section the and thank you for giving these topics uh, so i will be creating video soon on index subscript tables search and these topics which you have mentioned the next question is asked by rupa sp that you have a cobol and jcl and if output length is increased then which all things needs to be changed yes yeah, rupa like uh, i agree like this question i have faced uh, in many interview that they ask this this is kind of situation based question i would say it's not to the point yeah so uh, in case the length is increased output length is increased so uh, let's say we are using file so in file let's say initially we were writing 100 length data in file now it's 110 so in that case we need to change the copy book if it is being used we need to change the logical record length of the file output file if there is any db2 tables involved then we definitely need to increase the length of the column where we are inserting that value we need to change the dcl gen as well if the field which length has been increased and that is being inserted into the table so column length will be changed dcl gen will be changed and wherever that dcl gen is being used or table structure is being used in a cobol program that program needs to be compiled pre compiled compiled again additionally the copy book which we are using to write into the output file uh, so that also needs to be wherever that copy book is being used that all program needs to be recompiled now next 
it's not question basically it's a feedback that was sound quality but topic is super yeah so thank you i would say prashant for your feedback yeah so like um, the last device which i was using it was not good i would say i just got new device for recording this video so hopefully in this video will be not seeing that sound quality or video quality issue now next question was asked by muhafiz said that uh, do you have any coaching institute i need a main frame training yeah i do provide that but i don't market it because uh, i don't want to be like doing a marketing that i am teaching and you need to come on so i i will share the mail id with you Mo, muhafiz that you can reach out to me yeah i do provide the coaching uh, if you need help in uh, or assistance in preparing for mainframe interview i will be assisting in that as well so the next question was asked by uma maheshwari hi sir can you please make videos about comp yeah sure uma like i am planning for comp and cursor related videos so next video will be on comp and cursors so stay tuned for my next video uma next question is by prashant prashant is asking bro why did you delete the technical test video yeah so that's basically i also wanted to communicate with you guys that on this channel we had this copyright strike because i was using the company name like uh, company name i cannot tell the company name as well so that's why if you see here i have been using the name like kpj and then next then if you see here like i have been using vpro and then morgan stanley i cannot use the exact name because of that i got the copyright strike so that's why i deleted those video you can just name it i will create the video and upload it and they are the heroes or the motivators for me so thank you raj rimi vishweshwar Diksha, Shnigdha and Kunal these are really inspiring words for me which keeps me motivating for making more such technical videos so thank you very much and if you have any question or any suggestion regarding this video do post it into the comment section below I will try to include it in my next video and I request you to please subscribe to this channel thanks for watching I hope to see you in my next video bye bye